Hello and welcome back to Caves of Cud. We're, we're gonna do a little bit of shopping. I love shopping, you know? It's just like, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite things. There's nothing in that. Do you want to start? No, I want to talk to the plant. Um, flawless crystal coronet. Oh, that's not really what I had in mind. Is that... We already have a flawless crystal coronet. Okay. Flawless crystal is definitely worth uh, upgrading to. We have a nuclear cell. I might want to take off... Um, we already have a nuclear cell. We don't really need that. I might want to take... Oh, flawless crystal mace. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the good stuff right there, bud. Uh, I might want to take off our named item that gives us... Is currently giving us, um, light manipulation since we are now officially on the... Uh, glimmer spectrum. Um, like, it's just, yeah, I'd rather not have to deal with, uh, psychic hunters. We're just gonna buy all of these. And I'll sell some more cider. Um, I'll sell, I guess I'll sell, I'm selling all of the cider. We can always get some more. Cider is, is now, uh, going to be our main source of currency. I know exactly where that cider, um, is. Let's, uh, we'll sell a r couple of rough agates that'll top us up. And we are good to go. I could start looking at weird artifacts, but I, I don't like... The, the problem with buying weird artifacts from plants is they won't tell you what they are. You have to find out wh what they are somewhere else. You know, like, I don't care where you find out, but just not from me. And that's just such a bummer. We also have a bunch of... Uh, artifacts we should check out. So we've got a lead acid cell. Combustion cell. Those are not terrible. Eight weird artifacts here. Oh, HE missiles. We want to treat these as scrap and then disassemble all of them. Um, we have a wrist calc and a wrist fan. I guess the wrist calc got um, dropped from like our in equipment because we got fungled. We got the Murmur's Prayers. What is this? The following is an excerpt from the travel diary of Kaylin Sanch. Oh, right. Outpost of the Pewtis Templar. This is uh, some interesting uh, possible propaganda. You leased along the digits at the end of Odin's mighty arm, servants most faithless and failing. Play as a tune. If you mur murmurs do not please, you will be paid most painfully. Interesting. I'm not sure what that's about. I feel like there are more tiles for books now, which is kind of cool. Um, there's someone else down there that I could buy from. Hold on a second. Let's, what do you have? You are an apothecarist, so you will have um, some stuff. Ooh. Gallbeard gland paste, a hedge of brewing. We've got a recipe. I don't really need a recipe. Uh, I will buy that Hulk honey injector, though. We'll start selling uh, used chem cells. So we're we're very like fully stocked up on. Um, ooh, queasiness passes. We're fully stocked up on herb berries. We've got like really healthy AV now. We're looking good. We're pretty set up for the late game. We could probably do Bethesda Susa. Mechanimus Pilgrim and Denizen of the Eid Freehold. What do they have? Nothing. Is there not some... Oh, this is a library. I, I figured we could buy some books here, but no. Not the case. So, you know what? What uh, better way to leave Eid Freehold? And I don't think there's much else for us here. I, I might check out some stuff here. We've got some vases. Some vases, if you like. And then we've got... I don't know what the, this is all about down here. Wait, there's a, a hole. Do I want to go into this hole? Probably not. Fall in the coral pit. And now I'm just underground. Not really a place I want to be, if I'm being honest. Interesting. Is it like it's kind of interesting to me right now? There's not 
really a lot of indications of the Palladium Reef here. It's we're, we're almost kind of fighting just normal swamp stuff. Oh, well, there's a mad pole, so there's there's me being wrong again. I truly do not want to have to deal with a mad pole, so I'm not going to. Um, we, we're friends to the herring. I don't like where we are right now. You know what? Let's recoil back to Eat Freehold. What I was going to do is I was going to step on the clam. Just to leave, you know. That's how we that's how we leave Eat Freehold now. You sense the animus of a vast mind someone is near. Well, that's not really something you want to see. Well, there they are. Now, I mean, this isn't terrible for us because we could potentially steal some ego. Oh, they they made some p nasty plants for us. We can steal ego from them. These guys are going to be like pretty easy for quite a long time. They're not going to be a problem. So honestly, I don't mind uh, you know keeping this whole thing going. I'm just going to go ahead and let them fight those um, plants. Oh, we do. Do we not get any? Uh, we don't get anything from fighting those plants. Like no. No experience. We also just found a crystal dagger. That's got to be like one of the best wait for your money finds ever. So we are one strata deep. Uh oh. I don't like that. Trinning lamprey. Trinning. I don't know what that means. Is that main three or just one? Lampreys are not good at the best of times. Ouch. So that didn't basically do any damage. We're gonna leave. You might uh, you might be asking me, how are you going to leave? Well, we're gonna leave the way we came, which is via via clam. And we're gonna hope that I'm okay here. And it, this seems okay. I can rest. I'm all right. There is a, a spell. What do you call him? Svardim. This one's very tough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Temporal Fugue. And hopefully we will perma-stun them. We're going to conk them. Okay. We killed them. That was worth 800 experience. What? Are, are, is that an enemy? Oh, so that's me. And they seem to be not okay. It's evil you. Shadow Uk Umer. <laughs> So uh, I do know that this is something that occasionally happens, which is uh, occasionally your your yourself, your temporal clones can become evil. Um, fortunately, only one of me is evil, and the rest of me are still good. So they're they're gonna do their best, and and the evil clone is gonna disappear along with the rest of the temporal clones. So we're fine. I kind of wouldn't mind doing a little bit of exploration. What is that? That looks like crystal. A crystal agus. Wow. Um, that's a really nice find. Almost exclusively wants, uh, makes me want to get into shields. Now, I have had like a different, differencing in opinion when it comes to shields. Because, um, you know, I, I thought that shields only worked if you were wielding them, is my understanding. But I have heard from people that, no, in fact, they, every, for every shield you wear, you, they, they kind of have a chance to improve your AV. Um, I kind of don't understand how shields work, if I'm being, un like, really honest. Also, speaking of equipment, we're, we're definitely going to want to... Um, equip that crystal mace. I don't know why I didn't. And we're th this isn't a, we can't even cap out the penetration on this crystal mace. So that means um, what do you call it? Metamorphic, not metamorphic. The the next one up from crystal flawless crystal is probably in our future. 
Um, let's go ahead and in our, let's replace our blunt tip with the shield. And I think I want to take shield. And I'm going to read it real quick because I, I want to refamiliarize myself here. So, um, as long as you wield a shield, there is a 50% chance you block one melee attack per round. When you block an attack, you add the shield's AV bonus to your AV for that attack. If you equip multiple shields, the one block per round limit is per shield. Uh, and you can only you you only can attempt to block a given attack once using your best usable shield. So as I end, like if I read that, what that tells me is um, one shield is good and you're going to get basically an opportunity to block one attack. This is per round as I understand it. Meaning if something is attacking you with multiple attacks, then yes, you will have the chance a chance to block the other attacks with other shields, right? Not a lot of things in CUD will actually attack you multiple times per turn. Obviously, you're going to be fighting something pretty tough if you're doing so. Um, so that's not to say that this isn't it, it isn't worthwhile wearing multiple shields. I just don't think that it is like as useful as people think. Um, like I, I really, I really couldn't tell you. Now I have put it on one of my uh, hands. I, I guess this is like most people would tell me that this is not actually what I should do, and instead I should put it on my arm. But I actually can't put it on my arm. Um, I think that's only a specific kind of shield, like the the, the kind of small shields. So um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put it in one of our hands. That's that's fine. We still get two additional attacks per turn, maybe. You know, like that's good enough. I'm happy with that. Um, so, you know, like, it's it's an interesting um, kind of balance you play in CUD, and it's interesting also to me, uh, the different interpretations, whoops, press the wrong button, just straight up the wrong button, uh, the different interpretations of not, not even just like rules, or sorry, not, not just lore in the CUD, but also rules, like, I, I, I have a different idea of how um, shields work than, than other people. And, I you know, there's going to be an objective truth, but it really is just, like, me trying to interpret um, the ruling, like, how it, how it sounds. So we got 800 experience. It might be, honestly, might behoove us to uh, roam around. I don't know what that sound is. You pluck a coral polyp off the strut and toss it aside. Why? Why am I doing that? Oh no. Oh, this is not okay. Okay, um, this is, this is, uh, we, we, we gotta go. We gotta go. We're not okay right now. We're straight up, like, the worst we could be, actually. Let's, uh, don our mechanical wings. Uh, I don't think it's noticed us yet. That is a, if you don't know, that's a Galgal. -gal. Galgals -gal are robots, I think. Monstrous gleaming wheels orbit a center sphere of xenon clouds and gallium. I, these are, these are, uh, these are robots and we, we have to go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and control tab and we're going to mechanical wings. You're grounded. Uh, hopefully I'm not... Oh, we're astrally te tethered. You're grounded. Why are we grounded? So the thing is aware of our presence. Um, we're gonna sprint. And can we fly now? Why are we grounded? I really don't understand that. Um, let's see here. X... And then active effects cannot fly. Do you want to explain to me why? Galgals are one of the one of the most dangerous new enemies in CUD. Oh, cool! This thing is holding holding me in place. All right, we have to. I'm really hoping the Galgal is not following us right now. That is like my biggest hope right now. 
Okay, we're we're okay. So, um, if you're curious why I fear the Galgal, -Gal, so um, basically they shoot you with apparently astrally te tethering lasers, which is already kind of a a big yikes, especially if you're a mental mut uh, mutant, and I am. Um, but also, they then charge you. They can charge you, like charge you down. And they, like, just kind of phase through you. And, um... It, it, you just, you just die. <laughs> like, it's just an absurd amount of damage that you take. And, uh, yeah, it's not okay. So, you know, we, we've been, we've, I've been spending a bit of time doing this whole clam thing. But that's not really why we're here. I do want to go check out the slints again. And, uh, what I'm going to do is make an effort to talk to there is apparently one slinth here who is well spoken they have a name and i need to find them ah tha and we found it. i can't believe i didn't find him this last time a stranger welcome to the hydropon i am tha moon and sun tha i am uk umur well well met uk umur please forgive the uh Austerity of our cradle. You may sup with us at our meager camp and rest under the shade of this palladium shell. Sorry, as well, about the crowding. What manner of being are you? We are called Slinth, a people grown one by one from a hydroponic cradle containing a cutting of a water lily and empowered by sunslag. Oh, uh, did I take the sunslag that basically propagates them? We are but a handful of generations old, but kept no written history until it was grown uh, some number of decades ago. Is all well here? Well enough. We drink the sun's rays, eat what we scavenge, rest under the shell, and it is enough. Uh, I read I read it and tinker. Some hunt, others tend the cradle. Each day is like the next. Every so often, someone leaves. We uh, rarely hear from them thereafter. I hope they are all well. You don't seem happy with the status quo. To be wholly honest, Uk Umir, I grow frustrated. We are a young species, grown one by one in a yonder sun-touched cradle. Over years we have increased, but uh, not uh, grown. Look around you, you see it, yes? This hydropon is no settlement. How can I help? This is an existential conundrum, Uk Umir. I'm not sure that it could... Uh, Wait, no, I am reconsidering. This uh, this character would be voiced by Jeff Goldblum if if the Caves of Cud movie was made. No, you could help if you wished, I think. May, may I explain? Please do. I don't believe my people wish to stay here, but we have had so little uh, meaningful contact with other sapient creatures. We have no allies. We have nowhere to go but here. You travel far and wide, do you not? You have the air of a traveling hero, from the epics as such. You have seen many settlements, likely integrated yourself to some. Surely, if you were to intercede on our behalf, some might welcome us? If, uh, let us say, three settlements were, able, were to offer us shelter, this would grant us both direction and agency. Would you consider being an, um, our ambassador, not unpaid? I will help. You have received a new quest landing pads. Thank you, Uk Amir. I have... Uh, I have been crafting a personal project of sorts. I promise it to you for this task, and of course, the gratitude of a young species. Return to me after settlements agree to grant us refuge, and I will discuss them with my kin. Interesting. I like this quest a lot, because there really hasn't been up until now much incentive to, like, care about the other settlements. So... I, I can really appreciate this. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Murkud. Which I believe is just in the middle of nowhere. Um, where am I? Yeah, it's pretty pretty in the middle of nowhere. And we're going to go and check out one of the settlements that I have made friends with. We can, I'm sure, make, um, you know, consider our own settlement for this. But I, right now I want to just do the one that I think has the best chance. We're going to talk to Oracle E5A. I don't know if I completed the quest for them. I, in my travels, I encountered a people, the Slinth, seeking a new home. Oh, this is the robot! This is the robot I was going to make friends with. Amazing. 
Is that so? I imagine you wish to know if Bibamur will host these slints to partake in wandering the salt dunes alongside us. If he would have them, yes. We have not come so far from the founding of Bibamur to allow these strangers in. What if they worship the abuse of the bow and the rifle? No, we simply cannot do such a great favor for you. Uh, I wonder if they would do it if I was better friends with them. Um, we are better friends to the villages of Bibamur. Uh, and the, uh, wow, robots have increased to 100, by 100 to 375, like a huge step there, honestly. And even having some reputation with the Naphtali tribe would be amazing. Um, I wish I had some, uh, secrets to share with them. Phosphorescent cookies with hot goulash, that sounds good bad. <laughs> I wonder if they would do it for me now. Okay, so it seems to me, regardless of my reputation with them, uh, I can't ask them. So what I'm going to do is I am going to consider, this is my last ditch effort here, is I want to consider um, trying to find Big Emmer, which is the quest that they gave me. Five to nine parasangs west of the lair um, of, I'm not even going to try to attempt that. So what we have to do is we have to, we have the layer of that legendary glow, glow pad available. It is, oh right, Omen Porch. This is, a, this is a quest that I found at the time kind of untenable to, to achieve. Um, because it was very, very high and very west. This glow, pa glow pad layer is here, and so therefore, the um, it, it stands to reason that the, the the thing they are looking for is also in the river. Let me see here. Five to nine parasangs west. We're gonna give it a go. First of all, uh, let's see real quick. Travel to the layer of the legendary glow pad. Well, I didn't really want to travel like i just want to know where it is i found another layer of the legendary croc and now i'm fighting a still beard and a dong glider okay um we're gonna put on our mechanical wings and we're gonna leave <sighs> um I thought it would tell me where on in the parasang it was. You know what I mean? Like someone was saying that if I travel there it will tell me where. Okay, here we go. Ah, it's in the dead center. In the dead center is that glow pad. So what we want to do is go one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna st start in the center. I hate traveling in the river but um we are flying so hopefully that gives us kind of a fighting chance of course um you know the worst part about flying is you're only flying until you aren't yeah there it is so we're gonna I have to stop every once in a while. Like, the thing is, you can't really control when you fall. It's impossible. You can't plan for or around it. Okay, we're knocked prone again. We're going to wait for the cooldown to come off, and we're going to fly again. I really don't want to have to deal with um, mad poles. Like, they basically, they're merciless. They immediately disarm you. And I mean that in the sense of, like, goodbye, arms. Say, you know, farewell to arms. <laughs> um, and, I like, I do have a solution for that. I do have a, um, uh, a, a recoiler for Eat Freehold, so I would be able to regrow my arm. But then I'd also have to deal with the fact that I, I'm going to have to, um like fight off the mad pole at the moment because whatever hand that is holding a weapon that is now you know severed and on the ground uh you know i need to get my weapon back this, you know losing your arm is just it's a real issue 
and I don't want to have to deal with it. So uh, I am moving west. We're on the center block on the river and we're moving west. This is like a real kind of hopeless task, what I have here. Like I, I am hoping that by completing the quest for that um, settlement that they will change their mind about accepting the slinth. I don't know if that's the case, but at least it would rule it out and I don't have to worry about it for future reference, you know? We have more mad poles. The mad poles are giving me pretty good uh, experience. 270 each is nothing to sneeze at, so uh, I am, as long as I have, um, you know, the ability to fly and I'm at completely no risk of hitting anything but the, well, I should be able to shoot through the, the glow pad then I'll, I'll definitely take a free 270 experience but that's remember that that's what I was kind of talking about why I save books is that even mad poles are only giving me 270 experience now 270 experience at the beginning of the game is good that's amazing but like right now how I need how much do I need 70,000. I need to get from 70,000 to 80,000. 82,000. More more like, well, yeah, let's just call it 82. I need 12,000 XP. 270? That's not, uh, that's no longer like paying off the mortgage. That's, that's paying the bills is what that is. That's maybe paying for milk and bread if I'm lucky. If, if you catch my, my drift here. Um, so... Uh, I'll take it if I can get it for nothing, but it's really not anything to, to think about. So you might you might wonder, well, wh why do you care about the 100 experience from a book that you've hoarded for several hours? Well, the thing is, is that it's 100 XP is one book. And when you hand in like 20 books, then that's kind of a free level. Um worthwhile you know it's it is actually worthwhile a free level when you're like level 25 is kind of a big deal i think there's new sound effects for the electro bow would almost like to check it out myself all right so um we discovered Bagapur, which was our our quest completed let's go ahead and preserve our foods and go ahead and go back to our village not our village but the village that we have to hand this quest in i kind of hope that this is the answer um, i'm looking for because that would mean that there's an incentive to complete these quests outside of just like the random goodies that they give you i've located bigger per complete the quest 1500 experience we get more rep with the villagers um, choose a reward. These look like books. These are advertisements to... Oh, Legendary Icker Merchant. Um, kitchen of a Legendary Chef. Or Data Disc, Data Disc, Data Disc. That's actually kind of tempting. Random Data Discs or XP. Well, we'll take the XP. So now, would you uh, take this? Simply cannot do such a great favor for you. Okay. All right, so that answers that question, Question, which is no. They will, if they say no, they mean no, and they never will. Uh, and I'm, I'm okay with that. It is what it is. You know, not everyone can be friends. I do want this laser pistol, though. Because at a certain point, I'm going to have to consider the possibility of not having light manipulation. And uh, it would be a good idea if I had two laser pistols. I don't know, I, I did save the other one, right? Please tell me I saved the other laser pistol. I'll keep that combustion cell. It's just a good way of storing that oil that I don't, uh, you know, I leave alone. It's a good way for logging in my brain. Hey, by the way, there's your oil and you'll always have it. No, let's not sell the blunt tip. No, let's sell the blunt tip. It's nine pounds. <laughs> Goodbye, blunt tip. It was nice to have you, but, uh, like many things in code, you have become irrelevant. I wouldn't mind grabbing that blaze injector as well. Um, 
I need some more, we need some more water skins. Let's grab some more water skins. Always good to grab a couple of water skins. Um, and I think we're good. Uh, I'll sell a couple of basic toolkits. And that's, that's good. We're all right. So, um, do we have any artifacts to, yeah, we do. Okay, let's check these out. Poison gas grenade. Masterwork electro bow. Nice. That is going to fall under the category of uh, rifles and bows, so not really worthwhile to us. Okay, so um, this place is kind of written off for this length. Let's go to our normal home. Deva. Kind of want to... Oh, you know what? I should have gone to Ezra and bought the recoiler for Ezra because I, I don't have a recoiler for Ezra. All right, let's talk to the Elder. All right. Um... Is that so? I imagine you wish to know if Devo will host these slints to partake in wandering the salt dunes alongside us. Pax Kalok, legendary a croc, dwells in his home. Okay. Pax Kalok, where are you? What? Have I not fully explored this zone? This is a marble statue of Pax Kalok. I guess I haven't fully explored the zone. I thought I did. But uh, I don't know where Pax Kalok is. I still don't know where Pax Kalok is. What do you mean is dwelling in his home? There's no. Have I just like maybe not come across this creature if they like somehow avoided me? This whole time? Hmm. You say Pax Kalok the Croc is dwelling. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I hope I'm not enemies to everyone now. That's a, what is this? Snapjaw Warlord. Wait, if you would have them, yes. We have not, oh, I see. We have not come so far from the founding of Deva to allow these strangers in. What if they worship profanity towards Pax Kalok, Legendary Croc? No, we simply cannot do such a great favor for them. Uh, oh, I see. So Pax Kalok dwells in the home is just their way of saying goodbye. And I took that to mean you should go talk to Pax Kalok. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. All right. Well, that kind of sucks. So this place is not going to do it either. Did we make friends with this warden? Yeah, we did. I think I've prob that's probably the third or fourth dram that I've shared with that this fellow. Uh, we're going to need some more water. 50 drams is not going to do it for me. I think um, when you're an amphibian, 100 drams minimum is like what you need. Okay. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. Not a lot of progress, but not not a lot of progress. I don't know. Um I don't know what, to, what 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 we should be doing next, but I think that I am I'm not in a terrible position to consider doing Bethesda Sousa. Um, I could also head back to the asphalt mines and consider uh, continuing that. We have like AV17, uh, and we have a pretty good setup right now. Um, so you know, like we could we could do some fun stuff. Uh, I also should try and find some other villages if I want to complete the Slynth quest. That's going to end up being a little bit harder than I thought. Um, I could also consider checking out some of the goat folk villages and trying to make more friends with them. However, I don't have any more love injectors, so that's going to be less of a thing that we can do. So, I don't know. I might just head back to the asphalt mines and check that out. But... Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.
Thank you.